Hello and thanks for joining us for this edition of Tech 24, coming up. Our love of technology has a dark side. Electronic waste is on the rise with serious implications for the environment. We'll be asking an expert the best course of action when getting rid of that tablet or cell phone. And later in the program, think dinosaurs were extinct? Think again. We've got a pet dinosaur on set with us. Dana J. Cattle Car will be testing a dinosaur robot that responds to your touch. They're taking more and more space in our lives, in the back of our closets, and unfortunately in landfills. Electronic waste is a growing problem around the world. On one hand, we can't wait to get the latest technology, but then what do we do with older, outdated models? Perhaps unsurprisingly, the United States and China generate the largest amount of e-waste in the world, but it's in Latin America that a number of countries are tackling the problem head-on. Phoebe Lanzerwood has more. Mobile phones, computers and CDs. Just a handful of the items adding to a 21st century problem. Countries across Latin America are struggling to cope with the rate at which they're generating electronic waste, more commonly known as e-waste. We're seeing more awareness, but before there wasn't any at all. We're still not allowed to collect electronic waste from people's homes. We can only collect it from large companies. Only seven out of 21 Latin American nations have passed legislation to tackle the issue. Many have recycling plants, where discarded items are pulled apart to retrieve reusable material. But handling e-waste is no easy feat. This type of recycling involves dismantling electronic items. You could say that what we're trying to do is to get the meat off the bone. But it's dangerous work because the electronic parts often react with water or acid, and this could eventually have a polluting effect. Brazil, Mexico and Costa Rica are currently the only countries with recycling centers that meet internationally recognized standards. In 2010, 33.8 million tons of e-waste was generated worldwide. The 40 million mark was passed last year, and by 2018, the total is expected to rise to almost 50 million tons. There's still a lot to be done because there are just a few companies that have really committed to the total destruction of electronic waste. With less than a tenth of e-waste being properly recycled across the planet, the race is on to turn electronic trash into treasure. Our guest on this topic is Rudiger Kerr, the head of the Institute for the Advanced Study of Sustainability at the United Nations University. Mr. Kerr, when we talk about e-waste, what are the numbers here? So at the moment, we estimate or calculated that out of the 42 million tons generated e-waste annually, uh, roughly 6.5 million tons are finally recycled in existing schemes. This does not mean in practice that everything is only going to landfills or to the waste bin, etc. Um, but uh, in established um, uh, or only into established systems as such. Uh, one big issue associated also with the e-waste is that uh, consumers are keeping too long equipment in their drawers, in their cellars, etc., not disposing it off uh, properly to the recycling centers or to other collection points, and this is definitely also an issue. Because once they do, they are definitely no longer usable, or once they do, it's probably also hard to uh, perform appropriate material recycling. Now, what kind of environmental effects does e-waste have? Well, there are certainly environmental and health issues also uh, associated with uh, the recycling um, of electronic gadgets. But this especially only in the backyard or primitive recycling procedures performed in the global south very often. This is resulting, for example, um, out of trying to harvest copper out of cables by simply burning the plastics around. This is, for example, by putting um, 
PCBs, printed circuit boards, uh, into acid baths in order to have access to the precious metals within, especially gold or silver, for example, and not having appropriate uh, countermeasures in place so that leakages of the acids in the ground, etc., are taking place. And we must be aware of the fact that uh, for most ICT-related equipment, so information and communication technologies, such as computers or our mobile phones, the biggest environmental load of these equipment is not in the end-of-life phase, it's during the production. So every attempt to prolong the lifetime of these uh, products should be applauded, and it's reducing the environmental rucksack through the production. So the quicker we are disposing of this kind of equipment with the appropriate recycling scheme at the uh, proper collection points, etc., the greater is also the possibility that it can be reused. Now, let's just say that I bought a new cell phone. What should I do with the old one? The best is to dispose it off early on to an appropriate recycling center, either provided by the mun municipality or you return it in an envelope to the uh, brand um, you get it from or to the um, service provider you have a contract with. So there are these opportunities, but so far they are not prominently made aware of uh, simply because consumers are not interested in these aspects at the moment. If the brands, if the retailers are establishing schemes where they are rewarding early on the consumer for returning their equipment, uh, this would probably avoid a lot of leakages and also these illegal shipments ongoing or primitive recycling at the end of the day, because there is something in return and uh, against the high prices we are nowadays paying for resources on the global market, there might be also incentives for the companies to do so. That was Rüdiger Kerr joining us there from Bonn in Germany. Now, Dan, Dan and Jay Cattlecar is on set with us. Um, Dan and Jay, let's, let's give a practical example here of e-waste, or at least of the components of uh, technology that are reusable. Right. So I have a laptop with me. It's an old laptop, which is about to be recycled. Uh, so let's start with the battery. Uh, as we know, it's a lithium-ion battery. It's self-explanatory. It has, uh, there's lithium present in it. Uh, on the... The heart of the laptop or the computer, it consists of a printed circuit board, and there are a host of metals used uh, in the PCB. So, for example, you have copper, you have silver, you have gold, you have tantalum, uh, there's also uh, tin, uh, when there are, there's, uh, uh, for resistors, you have aluminum oxide. So, there are a host of materials used, and mostly uh, the precious metals are uh, gold, silver, and platinum. And are they easy to take out? Oh, well, as the expert uh, told us in the program, the different processes that are used, for example, recycling or when you ship it to, say, a developing nation, there are, you know, less environmental friendly uh, techniques used to extract uh, gold and silver, I mean, precious metals. Are any, are any of them toxic? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, for example, the battery. Right now, we use the lithium ion battery, but earlier in the late, till the late 90s, we used to have nickel cadmium battery. So cadmium is a toxic element. And in older televisions, with the flat screen televisions, uh, they used to have, uh, it used to contain some traces of mercury. So mercury is also quite toxic. But interestingly, this pressure, it also contains precious metal I mentioned. And you know, the, it, there are ways of extracting this precious metal. And it's quite like for one ton of smartphones, which are, uh, as, uh, which is e-waste basically, you can extract around $15,000 uh, worth of precious metal. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well now, thank you for that uh, demonstration, Dan and Jay, and now it's time for Test 24. All right, Dan and Jay, I see you've got a robot dinosaur on set. It's called the Playo robot. Uh, it's very cute. What does it do? It's, uh, it's called a Playo RB. The first version was Playo. This is the second version. Oh my goodness, it's alive. I know. It's, as you can see, it's, it's an emotive robot. So it responds an emotive robot? to your touch. If you are very sweet to it, it will be very cuddly, like a small baby. And if you are mean to it, like for example, if you, you hold, hold it by a tail. Yeah, it, it, it's not amused at all, as you can see. It's kind of playing dead. Oh, oh no. Oh, it's, it's roaring. Yeah, it's not happy. I mean, it, it, it wants to be. 
It so wants you walk? to be cute. Put it on the table. No, no, it walks, but it takes some time. It's like a baby, no, it grows. So after you have- It grows? Yeah, in a sense that it, <laughs> see now it's lifting its In two its weeks, leg. it'll be bigger than the room. Not grows, in terms of its motion, in terms of its, you know, its uh, sensory perceptions. But you can try it, you can and be can cute. Can I pet it? Her. Is it gonna bite? No. Ah! Oh, and it, Oh, look, it, it likes me. Yeah, it's it its depends. Tail. Yeah, if you want to, oh, it will be. Oh, that's nice. Hello. <laughs> uh, you can be cute here as well. And... Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, it's an emotive robot. And as you know, these days, emotive robot, it's its something that all, I mean, there's a lot of research going on to build oh. these emotive robots. And this is this was actually uh, first of its kind. The first version was launched in 2006, and this is the second version, which was uh, launched in 2011. Oh, I like it. Where can I get one? Uh, well, right now, you can get it on eBay. Uh, Okay. But the company is going to relaunch it very soon, so maybe you will get even a better version of this really... And I, I've never seen a cuter dinosaur. I mean, I've, Oh, it is adorable. Yeah, they were terrifying in Jurassic Park, but this is, I think, the cutest dinosaur that I've come across, at least. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. And it has uh, plenty of... It, it has a host of sensors, like, you know, it, has, it, has, it can sense temperature, it can sense movement, uh, it can also sense, uh, you know, different foods. So, and it reacts accordingly. So it's basically, uh, how do you say, uh, baby... But it runs on batteries, right? Yeah, exactly, it runs on batteries. You can put the batteries here, as you can see. Uh-huh. So it's not happy. See, the moment you hold it upside down, it's not very... Yeah, happy. look at that, it's really smart. Yeah. Smart that's for a dinosaur. Of, yeah. <laughs> oh, great. All right, well, that's it from us here uh, at Tech24. You can find us on Facebook or Twitter. Our hashtag is Tech24. There's more news coming up on France 24.